Well, before the season started, we thought the power in the conference might be in the north. I don't know if that's necessarily true, but what I do know is the south as competitive a division in all of college football. Mike Yam and Yogi Rav, and of course we do this every single Tuesday inside Pac-12 football on Pac-12 Network. You don't want to miss it at 6 p.m. Pacific time. But take a closer look here at the standings in the south division. Look, 3-1 and one records for both SC and Utah. Two teams that do not, or excuse me, one team that does not control their own destiny in Utah because they lost the head-to-head -head with the U.S. See, and yet we're still talking about the Utes as a dark horse for the college football playoff. Uh, you agree with this assessment? These two teams play 10 times. Utah wins maybe seven of them. And it just so happened that one game, it was, it was USC's day. Well, if SC is rolling with Matt Fink or whoever their third string quarterback is, Utah wins nine out of 10. I mean, they dominate the whole game other than big plays. Sure. And this secondary has shown up the last two weeks. Brandon Ayuk was gloved. And you could argue the same thing for Washington State. Overall, offensively, they couldn't do much. And Isaiah Hodgins yeah. got slowed down in that game. So, yeah, I, th I think Utah is, is one of the best teams in the country. I think defensively they could hang with every powerhouse offense. I think they could hang with Jalen Hurts. They could hang with Justin Fields. They could hang with Tua when he's healthy. I mean, every layer, they got NFL guys, front, backers, and secondary. So it'll be really interesting because I also think there's a world where SC wins out. I mean, I've been around that program a lot, Mike, and they feel their backs against the wall. They yeah. know their reality, and we know their talent. You saw it last week. They got down to their fourth, fifth string running backs, right? Linebackers. Kanai Mauga balled out like an all-conference guy, sure. replacing Pali Ie now Teote. So, as well as Talano Hufanga being banged up. So, I, I don't know. Like, is there a world where SC wins out and goes to the Rose Bowl and wins it? There is. That world exists, which is yeah. crazy, as well as Utah getting a – uh, at large birth that exists as well. You know what's crazy about this conversation? I know you do a ton of radio interviews. I had a, I did one the other day, and someone had made a comment about Clay Helton, which I thought was interesting. Um, and it wasn't necessarily the most complimentary thing. They said, "Oh, you just never know what you're going to get from his teams." And I'm sitting there, and I had said, "How many teams right now would be able to survive in games where they're literally down to their third string quarterback?" And we saw it with Cal, for example. They've been struggling offensively with their backup quarterback. Here it is, Keaton Slovis, the second string guy, has led this team to a couple wins. They get a win with Matt. Think at the helm. You mentioned some of the, the issues they've had uh, in terms of injuries on the defensive side. Like, I don't know if Clay Helton, people will look at the Rose Bowl win and the Pac 12 championship. I think that this might be his best coaching job, though, since he's been at SC. It's a great observation. Not surprised that you make that. That being said, when teams deal with adversity, especially in major media markets like Los Angeles, with high-profile recruits that have 10 to 60,000 Instagram sure. followers, which is a thing if you're chuckling right now. It, really, it truly is. I go to culture. That's how you keep it together. So if you look at the teams that have been devastated in this conference by injury, right? In the North, it's been Stanford. They beat UW. They yeah. beat UW because of culture. It hung together. SC... They dominated Arizona because of culture, and that was a major point of emphasis this offseason. Clay Helton took back all the reins regarding discipline, right? He changed up the scheme. He changed up his staff. He changed up and eliminated some personnel. Some guys left. Some guys, some guys elevated. Like, that's a real thing. And, and I look at this team now, how hard they're playing, sure. and say, oh, they're, they're out efforting, efforting teams. They're playing more competitive than they have in years past. And not to look too forward, but next year they're going to be the favorite to win the Pac-12 South in my eyes. You could argue maybe the whole thing, pending who goes to the NFL and who sure. doesn't. So, yes, Mike, it, it's the culture for them, and, and I, I feel this team coming. It, it won't be easy because they, they got to go out on, on the road on a Friday night. They still haven't proven yeah. they can be special on the road. And they get Oregon coming home, which won't be easy. I'm going to ask you a big-time hypothetical, and I know we're running short here. Uh, Utah wins out, and they win the division. Oregon wins out, they win the division, and they meet for a Pac-12 championship, who's a better football team? Man, it's going to be so fun yeah. because it's the first time this year we'll see the best against the best, which is the best offensive That's line, line. Yeah. and the best defensive front. Yeah. And we will get a beautiful game as well as senior quarterbacks. We don't often talk yeah. about senior it's quarterbacks, let alone big-time running back group, big-time running back yeah. receivers they're all a way above average maybe nobody's special special yet in their career but all really talented like th th we will get if that happens the two best teams and you need to respect that and hope that happens i think from the outside awesome and say oh well, yeah one of these two teams whoever wins will compete against whoever is at the time the top three or four in the cfp ranking as the season has unfolded here you could make an argument 
that Oregon and Utah, top of the Pac-12, might be the strongest one-two in the entire country. I think there's some fans in the SEC that might make an argument, and it's fair, but I look at the ACC, I look at the Big 12, the Big 10. I mean, what the Pac-12 has at the top, keep talking about these elite teams or lack thereof, look no further than those two teams that have very few questions around both of them. Just saying. We do this every single Tuesday. We talk all things college football, specifically in the Pac-12 conference. You do not want to miss Inside Pac-12 Football at 6 p.m. Pacific Time on Pac-12 Network.